All right, now when we talk about gaming laptops, there are definitely so many brands out there. But when you talk about premium gaming laptops, only a handful of them actually offer great specifications, great design elements, and obviously great performance. And in that context, one of the best brands that you can opt for a gaming laptop is the Asus ROG Lite. This right here is the Asus ROG Strix G70. And for about 2 lakhs, this is definitely a premium gaming laptop. But the question is, what does that premium get you? And more importantly, is it worth it? Let's find out. This is one from GTR and you're watching my in-depth review of the Asus ROG Strix G17. Damn, that's heavy. Let's get started. All right, so let's start off by talking about the design here. Now, for me, I would say that the laptop definitely has some cool features and elements here that sort of sets it apart and makes it stand out in terms of design. It features a bold design and the lid is a little offset, which I really like in a laptop. Now, the laptop comes with four different fan outlets and the airflow vents definitely look cool from a distance and are placed ergonomically on the system. And of course, we can't ignore the cool ROG logo on the plain back of the laptop, which again helps in giving an identity to this machine. There's also the RGB uh, LED strip at the bottom of it, which definitely adds on to the flair of this laptop. Apart from all the other various RGB elements that are customizable, including the keyboard. Now the laptop easily passes the one handed opening test. Also, in terms of bezels, the top and side bezels are extremely thin. Now, of course, this is a desktop replacement laptop, which kind of explains the 2.9 kg heavy weight of the laptop. But nonetheless, it's definitely portable in the sense that you can definitely carry it around from one place to another. Now, in terms of connectivity, ASUS hasn't let anyone down. On the rear end, you get the charging port, a LAN port, an HDMI port, and USB C ports. Two USB A ports and a 3.5 headphone jack are located on the left side, and that's it. Now, personally, I wish that the laptop had a card reader on the right side as well, but since there is a lot of space there, but nonetheless, I am not complaining here. The reason why I am stressing on that is because of the factor that because it's a Ryzen powered system, there is no Thunderbolt 4 port here. So, when it comes to expanding using docks and hubs, well, the speed is going to be slightly limited in like when using just USB-C if you were to compare it with Thunderbolt 4. But again, for most users, that should not be an issue. Alright, now one of the best things about the Strix G17 is the display. Now, the Quad HD panel comes with 240Hz refresh rate that displays sharp, clear and vivid images. Whether it's YouTube or Netflix, as a viewer, you would be impressed with the great details, color reproduction and the consistency of the panel. Of course, it's a 17-inch panel, so the bigger real estate definitely aids in the content consumption factor. But then again, it's a gaming laptop, so you obviously have to talk about the higher refresh rate. And 240Hz is definitely amazing. Now, in fast-paced games such as Valorant and Rocket League, the performance is top-notch. Also, for AAA titles like Far Cry 6 and Cyberpunk 2077, like I said, the visuals are so good and the colors really pop out. And of course, having a bigger display really adds on to the overall immersive factor. Now, Asus has also included a dual speaker system with Dolby Atmos here to complement the visuals with rich sound. I won't be dwelling into much detail here. The speaker system is pretty loud, pretty powerful, and thanks to Dolby Atmos, you can easily customize it. Moving on, let's talk about the keyboard and the touchpad. First up, we have the keyboard and the typing experience on this keyboard is really good. The spacing between the keys is also pretty good and the clicky feedback is really nice. Also considering the bigger chassis, the good part here is that you do get a full-size numpad. You also get hotkeys for media and performance controls. Add to that, there are multiple macro keys as well, which you can set different shortcuts to in the armory crate for better productivity. Next up, we have the touchpad, which is, well, Almost great, but there's one slight complaint that I have. See, as far as individually the touchpad is concerned, it's pretty good. Gestures work fine. Uh, no ghost touches. Uh, palm rejection is pretty good. So as such, no complaints. Uh, the only issue that I personally have, well, it's not an issue per se, but the slight complaint is that because it's a 17 inch chassis, the touchpad could have been a bit bigger. I mean, it's still big, but it's big for an ultra book. For a 17 inch chassis laptop, it definitely could have been a bit bigger. But then again, obviously ASUS knows that if you're buying a gaming laptop like this, you definitely have money for a good gaming mouse. So 
90% of the time, especially considering it's a desktop replacement, you will be using a mouse anyway. And for the odd times when you have to use a touchpad, it's more than enough. All right, so moving along, let's talk about the performance. Now, our unit here comes equipped with a Ryzen 9 6900HX processor, clocked at a base speed of 3.2 GHz and a turbo of 4.9 GHz. It comes with a built-in Radeon graphics, but then you also have the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3070 Ti laptop GPU for dedicated graphic prowess. It's a 125W TDP GPU, including a 25W dynamic boost. You also get 16GB of DDR5 RAM, clocked at 4800MHz. As for storage, there's a 1TB of NVMe storage from Micron. The laptop also comes with a MUX switch, which basically is supposed to make graphical progress easier and ease the load on your CPU. I won't be dwelling into much detail. Just to give you an idea, every ASUS lineup is going to be coming with that thing. Uh, the advantages are, as ASUS claims, 5-10%. to 10 Not that much. We did not notice any major changes in our testing, so I won't be dwelling into much detail there. Alright, moving on to benchmarks, in terms of synthetic scores, you get absolute brilliance in terms of scores, be it Puget Bench, 3D Mark, PC Mark, Geekbench, Cinebench, or Unigen. As far as gaming is concerned, once again, it's top-notch quality. Be it AAA titles or esports gaming, you can just game at the highest settings and enjoy without having to worry about anything. Now, in terms of thermals, the ROG Strix definitely heats up, especially if you're using it under constant load and pressure. For instance, a 4K video render here pushes the temperatures to 80 to 85 degrees. With that being said, if you're talking about normal gaming needs, the cooling is more than enough. And the good part here is that the laptop does not feel warm to the touch. And that is really important because as a gamer, if you're gaming on a gaming laptop, you know that your laptop is going to heat up. You can't be expecting temperatures in 60, 65 degrees if you're talking about a gaming laptop with this much horsepower. But the important factor to note is that even if you're gaming, the keyboard area stays quite, well, I won't say cool, but it stays near the room temperature. It does not become warm to the point where you're like, oh, I can't really play on this or I have to attach an external keyboard to this. No, it stays fine. The cooling is decent enough for that. Of course, uh, I mentioned the video editing factor. But even in that scenario, during the edit process, the laptop is fine. No complaints there. It's only when you put it on rendering where the turbo performance kicks in. The fans also shift to the turbo mode. The laptop also creates a lot of noise, fan noise. But yeah, I mean, the performance is still good and the thermals definitely do not disappoint you. Lastly, we have the battery life. And the laptop comes with a 90 watt of 4 cell battery, which will give you about 3 hours of general usage and non-gaming battery backup, which I would say is decent enough considering the kind of horsepower that this thing packs in. There's also support for 100 watts of USB PD charging, which is nice in the sense that if you forgot your charger, <laughs> well, you can just use it to juice things up. Of course, 100 watts of PD is not going to be nearly enough to run this thing at the maximum power. So keep that in mind. But I mean, yeah, the support of 100 watts of Type-C charging helps if, for instance, if you're not pushing the laptop, but maybe you're just uh, doing some casual office work at times or just browsing through the web. And in the meanwhile, you do not want to lose a charge. 100 watts of Type-C charging is definitely convenient in that kind of a scenario. So the big question, is the ASUS ROG Strix G17 worth it? Well, I would say if you consider the overall package, it's definitely a good laptop out there. There are hardly a lot of laptops out there that offer similar specs at this price point. So that's one factor that really helps this thing. One more thing that I would like to add on is, if I were to buy this laptop for our own needs, like in our office, while everything is great, the one thing that I would immediately upgrade is the RAM because 16 GB of RAM is definitely a bottleneck for creative purposes, especially when it's mobile RAM. Even for desktop, I mean the capacity is going to be a bottleneck, but especially for laptop uh, needs. But nonetheless, as a laptop, for that price point, the performance that it offers is definitely amazing and it won't really leave you wanting for anything more. Also, one more thing that I would like to highlight is the reason why this is cheaper is because it turns with Ryzen. I'm sure you can get 3070 laptops with Intel 12th Gen processors, but they will definitely cost you in the range of 2.3 to 2.5 lakhs. This is definitely cheaper in comparison to those laptops. And to be honest, the performance is still top notch. So if you're not an Intel fanboy, my advice would be go with the Ryzen route, save a lot of buck and still get the top notch performance. And well, that was it. 
If you found this video helpful, make sure to let us know by giving a thumbs up and subscribing to our channel for more awesome tech content. Till then, this is Ram from GTR, and I'll see you in the next one.